Okay, we're going to talk about the new stereo system I put in the slingshot. Now, okay, just real quick. Um, I got the uh, the side um, armrest panels from Sling Mods. They're cut for a 6.5 inch um, speaker. And I put subwoofers in them because um, well, Sling Mods, all right, excuse my appearance. Sling Mods, um, they, uh, they had their own speakers that they tried to push with these, but, um, I needed to have some kind of bass and I didn't want to, I didn't want to take up my storage. Um, a lot of guys, you can put some nice bass in here, but actually sometimes I take this thing grocery shopping. <laughs> so I I use my storage and I put or your helmet and things like that. So I I was like, well, what's an alternative, you know, to putting a bass speaker? Excuse my light. You know, I want bass, but I don't want to take up storage space. So here I have these um, that go on the armrest. Um, now these are pile, and I swear I spent like thirty bucks for a pair on Walmart. And they're 150 watt max, um, 75 RMS, and they thump. They're the bass speakers. And then I got these in the headrest, uh, SSV Works they're called, because um, this year they didn't come that way. And this is a 17, so there wasn't even any wiring under here. Like, you guys with the newer ones, you're lucky you can just connect the wires because they have it wired for you, but not for this. So, and then um, I kept the stock Rockford Fosgates. They get a lot of hate, but you know what? I I googled the rock the whole Rockford Fosgate thing. Like some people were like, "Oh, the Slingshot stock speakers they suck." You know what? They don't suck. It's a head unit that sucks. Um, and I learned that, you know, it's like once I, once I put in the new head unit, I was like, man, these Rockford Fosgates are amazing. And it's because they're rated at like 200 watts. And I think they have like a hundred watt RMS or something like that. RMS means root, root means squared. It's basically how much can a speaker handle continuously? Um, I learned, I learned that too, because it's like, you know, just because a speaker is 200 watts, it doesn't mean you're going to get 200 watts out of it. Anyway, long story short, here is, oh gosh, Ugh. hold on, I know, it's a mess. Alright, so, mm -hmm. the stock head unit looks like this, it's got a tiny screen in it, and it's your basic NS waterproof, it's your basic system, um, and it's got some connectors back here, so... I replaced that with, uh, it's really hard to find waterproof, um, they call it marine grade things, but the BOSS, the boss people, they make one here, and so I put this boss unit in from Sling Mods, um, and I have no complaints, it, it, it's a pricier boss unit, like a lot of people will say, boss sucks, I have one, but then you find out they spent 70 bucks on it. This is like a $300 one. But, you know, it, it sounds okay. Um, and these sound really good. There's a tweeter in the middle. And everything's waterproof. Even these pile speakers, they're marine grade waterproof. Um, so, I'll show you what it looks like here. <sighs> All right. Dun, 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 dun. And, yeah. I got some wiring things. Oh, another thing about this. <laughs> All right. And I got the amplifier in the um, glove box, um, which is, you know, it's a 200 watt amp that runs these subwoofers. Um, now, okay, amplifiers overheat, blah, blah. Well, this one's a small amp. The glove box is very large on these. So, so far, um, when I'm running the amp and I pop the glove box and I feel it, there's no heat at all, you know, but I can see like those of you that are running a serious system with hundreds of watts, you know, like a thousand watts or something like my Shelby has, then yeah, you probably want to put the amp in an area where it's going to get a lot of airflow. But um, in this case, you know, 
in the goal of keeping everything waterproof, um, I, I, I put it in there and I wired the, uh, I'm not gonna pop the hood, but I, I wired the, um, the positive terminal to the, there's like a, on top of the alternator here because these don't have a battery in the trunk. They put it in the back, which is a pain, but anyway, there's a positive terminal here. And then I put the negative terminal. All right. If you have an amplifier, you gotta hook up really thick, they call it eight gauge wire to a to power it. And there's a positive and negative. So so um the positive uh I put under, you know, here, but the negative, I, I just took a bolt and put it, you know, on the bolt on the seat here. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, let me put this back. <laughs> so, anyway, this is a boss. I, I kept everything BOSS. Oh, I know, there's better brains out there, but um, I just kept everything the same. So, in you know, to keep everything waterproof and to where I can use in my trunk space, you know, I did what I could. So, but let me show you. Oh, and, and this head unit, it puts out um, 80 watts for four speakers. And then I learned, all right, well, there's some plugins for a subwoofer, RCA. Then I learned it doesn't power the RCs. You have to actually buy your own amplifier. So, and I, uh, the way I wired these, oh, 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 damn. All right, I almost forgot. The most important part, wiring, which is a pain in the ass on the slingshot. But I see a lot of people on the videos, they're like, um, you know, oh, I wire everything underneath the vehicle. So, which I guess you can do. There's like a nice frame under there. But um, I was thinking under the vehicle, I mean, you know, you got road debris and all kinds of stuff. That's not a good idea, which, you know, Maybe they get away with it. I mean, they put like some plastic protection on it. But anyway, you can actually wire it. Believe it or not, when I hook these up, um, once you take all this apart, there's like a really, uh, <laughs> there's an area here we can actually pull a wire through and um, kind of get it to come out here. And then you can wire it inside, which I did. Uh, yeah, this is too long of a wire, but I wired it. So where they come out here and then I roped it in and then you can wire it under here which I actually had a I actually cut apart a sponge <laughs> just to hold the wire in place and then um you know you wire it here and it goes all the way up all the way up 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 and then you can wire it way behind here just by going through here so you don't have to go underneath your vehicle and risk you know your wires getting ripped off by I don't know a speed bump or something um, and then also for these, these here, <sighs> no, I wired these the same way kind of, but for these, I, I kind of wired them all the way. You can't really see the wire, but I wired it through here and you see some zip ties. So it's underneath this thing and it goes behind this speaker the stock speaker and it goes all the way um, here you can see like a little you can see the wire here and come up here I mean yeah so you can still see it a little bit but not so much and it goes behind the steering wheel and through here so everything everything's wired on top of the vehicle so I don't have to worry about you know something on the road interrupting my wiring now you know those of you that are pros you're probably thinking oh you know like you're you're stupid for doing that we can just wire everything underneath and have everything totally hidden but i have things mostly hitting hidden <laughs> so like when you pop down here you can still see well, you know like okay but i have it covered with um hold on so I have it covered still with the whole wire protector stuff, but it's mostly hidden. <laughs> so, and then, you know, and this is just a charger, but, um, and then, you know, it, it runs up through here. So, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'm not that much a perfectionist where I need everything completely. And, and you can still see the negative terminal connected to the seat bolt, but, you know, to each his own. If you want to wire underneath your vehicle, then that's another way of doing it. I just, 
you know, this is my first install. I just thought it was easier to go on top. And, all right, and then I bought the, there's like a mounting kit, but there are some gaps in this. Um, it's my only complaint about this, so like, but, all right. Uh, another thing is, um, okay, when I bought this wire harness, sling mods and everything, they're like, oh, it's just plug and play. No, it's not. So basically, if you have a no radio, or if you have the navigation unit, then I think it's plug and play, but if you have the base radio, it's not. I had to splice the whole thing apart. There's nothing plug and play about it. Um, I'll probably do a video on that later. And then just to get the backup camera, um, okay. I'm gonna show you the backup camera part. Yeah. I know. I'm probably getting too uh, technical here. I apologize. All right, but uh, so I had to cut an access hole here, but I'll fix the rest <laughs> later. But I, I just duct taped it shut now. But you're supposed to somehow there's a wire on the top of your transmission that tells you you're in reverse. And then that's, and the whole, the harness plugs into there. Um, I think that, you know, it gets this power or something, but, um, and then to get power to the stereo, since it's not plug and play for, if you have a bass radio, I wired it to the cigarette lighter here and I taped it over. And this was like these, I almost powered the amplifier that way, but I decided against it. But anyway, yeah, so cigarette lighter, positive, negative, I spliced to that to power the stereo but yeah it's it's like um you can either reach down a hole and try to get this connected but yeah there ain't no way so all right that's all the technical stuff but let's get to the fun stuff all right i got some music playing ain't no sunshine wish Thank you. 
It's got a backup camera. Anyway. The backup camera, well, <clears throat> it's kind of funny because, hold on. The whole reason why I had to cut a hole in the side of my tun in the side of my tunnel out there was just to do the whole backup camera thing. And then it turned out that it's very dim. And I don't know, like maybe I need to get an aftermarket one, but I was hoping that the harness, you know, would account for everything. But the backup camera works. It's just super dim. It's, it's like, it looks like it's dark all the time. And there's no way to adjust the brightness on this head unit with the backup camera, so eh. But I mean, for if you're looking for an audio upgrade, um, first I recommend taking it somewhere because you know, it took me, and I'm slow, it's probably why, but it, it took me like a couple of weeks on and off because I work for a living, but it took me like a couple of weekends to get this whole thing wired and kind of solid. So, and um, you know, figure things out. So I recommend if you can afford it, just take it somewhere. Uh, if you do it yourself, more power to you, but eh, you know, if, I probably, you know, I'm happy I did it myself, but I don't know. I probably would have taken it somewhere. <laughs> and then these, also these, um, these bolts here, it may be because mine is a 17, but these bolts are very fragile. You can see <laughs> wire ties. The bolts, they snapped off. You know, it's like the head of them snapped off, and it happened in a couple different places where, um, you know, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm screwing the bolt, the bolt in that, you know, that came with the vehicle and putting things back on and then boom, it just snaps apart. You know, it's like, I think here's an example of one. So once that happens, I even tried to get a pair of vice grips to back it out, but it wasn't working. So the stock bolts are kind of crappy on the, I don't know what, what they used, uh, but they probably need to look into that on their side. Anyway. That's the uh, the sound system, and of course, um, you need some kind of cover, so it makes it hard to see. But if you want, if you want to be able to see the screen at all during the day, you need some kind of cover uh, that goes over it. And it's not 100%. I still can't see the screen if the sun's glaring, but it's better than nothing. And um, so what you're looking at here is basically just an 80 watt per channel um, system. And a 200 watt amp and then you got your subs um now the most expensive part was the stereo and the and these uh you can cut your own holes out probably you probably don't even you don't need to buy these um you can cut your own holes if you want and just but i just bought these because i'm lazy <laughs> so between that and this it was expensive and um the whole wire harness thing um i think that I don't understand like if you have a stock radio with a small screen then that wire harness the only part that does work is a backup camera and then it's kind of like you can hardly see the backup camera so maybe don't even worry about the harness just wire this just wire the radio to the speakers and then maybe get a aftermarket backup camera and then just kind of wire that by itself um and get it back here kind of where this one is because Unless you want to cut a hole in the side of your slingshot like I did <laughs> here with all that tape. Um, it's, you know, I don't know um, if it's worth it looking back because the whole reason I cut that hole was just so that it knows it's in reverse. And, you know, it was, so it's kind of like, eh, probably a better way of doing it. Anyway, I'm sure there's more people that are experts at this than me. But if you want to save storage space, um, I recommend, you know, go for something like this. You know, it's, it's right here and your passenger and you can feel it right next to you vibrating. So now as far as bass goes, um, it's not what I expected in the garage. It sounds amazing, but when you're driving down the street, uh, and I watched a, a YouTube video of another guy talking about this, where you can't get bass out of a motorcycle or a slingshot the same way you can in like, you know, something like this. Like this, I have a big bass box in the trunk, and it sounds amazing when you're inside the vehicle. And this one, you know, 
it, it's gone, you know, because it's open. It, it, it's it's open air, so you know you're not you're not gonna get the same the same base because the base needs to be kind of enclosed and you know. Anyway, long story short, I learned like you're not gonna get the same base out of a slingshot as you are on a car. You know, it's just the law of physics um, where, you, you know, if you want base, you have to have it in a kind of an enclosed space and it has to reverberate. Uh, they call it reverb. Anyway, long story short, but if you want some base where, you know, you can feel it and you, and you want a little bit of lows and you don't want to take up your storage space then these door panels are the way to go and just put a base speaker in those don't put like a normal speaker like these um put one put a subwoofer they're called a and it has to be a shallow subwoofer because a normal subwoofer is going to be it has like too big of a magnet in the back so get a shallow they're called shallow subs and um, in this but anyway well that's the review of what it takes to do a stereo in a slingshot. My conclusion is just take it somewhere, have someone do it. Unless um, you're mechanically inclined and you have an extra vehicle to get you around and you don't mind being without your car for a couple weeks because by myself it took me a couple weeks. And it, But this is my first time doing an install. Even the amplifier was a surprise because I was like, I was like, my subwoofers don't, don't freaking work. But then, you know, so, okay, I have to power them with an amp. So that was like a whole nother, um, a whole nother weekend, just kind of buying an amp and putting the amp in and, and, uh, how to wire an amp. And, uh, anyway, so if you got the funds, take it somewhere. If you don't have the funds, you know, the parts are expensive too. Um, just these, these pods here, I mean, we're talking a... I don't know, two, three hundred bucks if you if you're getting the speakers with these pods, and um, they're not hard to put in. There's a couple bolts and and things like that, and then there's some holes under here where you can fish the wire. I fish the wire through here, but um, you know, and then on top of that, you got the head unit, which is between two and three hundred. It depends, and it's not even that great of a head. I mean, it's good. But, you know, it, it's not great. But the whole thing is, it's water, it's weatherproof. So that's why I got this. I tried to keep everything weatherproof, um, whether it's the subwoofer speakers, um, this this boss head unit is supposed to be, it's supposed to be weatherproof. So, and I put the amp in here so I can just close up this. And then that's weatherproof too. So, you know, it depends. Uh, a lot of people... They might get a head unit and they might get speakers that are not weatherproof because, you know, they don't take their slingshot out in the rain. I like to be safe, but um, to each their own. Um, you can buy much better quality. It seems like when you buy the weatherproof stuff, the quality drops. Just, you know, just when I look at the difference between, you know, the slingshot and the sound system in here, it's like, okay, well, you know, the weatherproofing probably takes something out of it. So anyway. I'm gonna make some edits to this video and then uh, I, I appreciate it. And yeah, so in conclusion, um, if you're trying to save space, just, uh, you know, go for the door, the armrest speakers. They even sell some for down lower, but I like the armrest ones so that you save your storage space back here. Headrest speakers so you can hear it when you're driving. Um, and try to get a waterproof head unit if you can and you know what you don't have to worry about changing out a lot of people complain about rockford phosgate but um rockford phosgate they're actually a one of the bigger name brands and they're that way for a reason they sound good it just so happens that polaris didn't pair them with a good head unit trust me when i put this head unit in those Rockford Fosgates, they sound like amazing now. I'm like, oh wow, it doesn't even sound like the same speakers. So it's all about the combination of things. You can't just, you know, oh, these speakers suck. I'm going to replace my speakers. And granted, yeah, there's better speakers that you can replace it with. But, you know, just replacing the head unit that drives the speakers, that makes a huge difference. You know, that's what I did with my Shelby. 
I, it, the Shelby has a Shaker 1000, a thousand watt system, and it was like, you know, it sounded okay, but when I put an Alpine head unit in it, it, it came alive. So just keep that kind of stuff in mind before you start, oh, I'm just going to replace the speakers, blah, 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 because you, you might as well just replace the head unit. And the stock head unit cannot drive more than two speakers if you got the base. So that's a, that's another reason. Um, I got this head unit because it can drive four speakers and, you know, a couple subs if you have an amp. So, you know, the stock head unit can only drive these front two speakers. So, and you can't hear these. You can feel them on your legs, but you can't hear them. So that's why I got the, the headrest ones when you're riding, you know, when you're driving. So, all right. The end. This is probably one of my worst videos. So.